Today we're going to be counting down the top 10 budget overland vehicles. When I say budget, I mean under 10,000. Needs to have low range, needs to be body on frame, needs to be tough as teak, and needs to be off road. Ready? Let's start at the bottom and take it to the top. Just because it's the smallest one on the list doesn't mean it doesn't have some of the best off road ability, best departure angles. Bulletproof Japanese reliability. I think you know what I'm talking about. The Suzuki Samurai. 1985 to 1996. That classic box shaped design. Had a variety of different engine sizes. From a 500cc all the way up to a 1.9cc. But the popular one was the 1.3 litre. It's really only for a single traveller or at a or for a couple at max you could possibly tow a little trailer as well to give you a bit more storage space but it really is a go anywhere vehicle on soft sand rock crawling as, as long as it's not a, a big hill but short wheelbase vehicles obviously don't do very well on, on steep inclines but if you're looking for something that's cheap to maintain you can pick one of them up for about 5,000 US lots of parts and accessories a, a cool Suzuki club to be a member of and it's and it's and it's it's one of the funky little four-wheel drives. You, 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 as a young person, you can get in one of these and still feel cool. It's not a frumpy old wagon. That's number ten, the Suzuki Samurai. You cannot go wrong with it. And becoming a little bit of a collector's item, so a top tip, get one now before they get too expensive. Number nine on the list. The old girl, a favorite of our American viewers, the Jeep Cherokee XJ from 87 to 2001 when the Cherokee was still a bulletproof car. Go anywhere. That four, that four liter petrol engine was a bit of a gas guzzler but very strong. Great off-road. Could power that car up most situations and with a bit of a lift, a two, three inch lift, better tires on there. A few other little upgrades it really is off-road ready not as reliable as the Japanese cars on the con but you can pick up one cheap cheap about three thousand dollars about fifty thousand rand number eight on the list a sleeper is the Asuzu trooper you can pick one of these up dirty cheap about three and a half thousand dollars Shares the same platform as the Suzu KB double cab bucky that you get here in South Africa, which is bullet bulletproof. That that three liter turbo diesel is they're still putting them in the new uh, Suzu double cabs. Bulletproof technology. The 3.2 V6 is a bit of a donk. It's not a donkey, but it's very high on juice. There's also a 2.8 turbo diesel, which is the the turbo diesels for the Suzus are the one to go for. So eight on the list is the Isuzu Trooper, which is the station wagon, and the KB is the double cab version of that. If you're in South Africa, you're looking to do a bit of off-roading here. You're looking to buy a, one of the strongest buckies, which we call well, it's a, we call it pickup, we call it bucky. Can't go wrong with the KB 300. That that engine can also take dodgy diesel and very very Toyota reliability, Toyota Hilux reliability. That's what gets it to number eight on the list. Number seven on the list, a favorite of many Americans and UK viewers, the Toyota 4Runner. You can't really go wrong with this car. Solid Japanese build quality. You got the choice of the 3 liter V6, which I had in my Camry, a very, very powerful engine, a bit of a gas guzzler though, and you get the 1KZ diesel engine, which is very, very strong, old school old school technology you don't see as many as the, of the diesels on the road as the petrols if you can get your hands on that 3 liter 1kz diesel you're doing well it handles rubbish diesel it doesn't get all clogged up some people talk about a cylinder head issues at about 200 220,000 k's on that 1kz engine so it's it's not quite as strong as some of the bigger land cruiser diesels like the 1hz but it's good enough for number seven on the list. You can pick one of them up for five to ten thousand US, depending on on the condition. You'll be looking at about a ninety-five one. You can pick up cheaper, all the way up to 
2009, you'll be looking at least $10,000 for one of those. Number next on the list, number six, winner of multiple Dakar rallies, the Mitsubishi Pajero second generation, which was 1991 to 1992. One of my, one of my favorites growing up, powerful seven seater. It comes in a 2.8 diesel and the 3.5 V6 petrol. The 3.5 V6 is bulletproof reliability, but high gas mileage, you're looking at about um, 15 liters per 100 K. So you really want to be going for the 2.8 diesel. But once again, that also there's been some whispers about cylinder head failures around 200, 250,000 K, similar to the 1 KZ engine, but a lot more efficient. So if you can, and, and a lot more sought after. So if you can get the 2.8 second generation Prado, you're going to be doing IRE. I very good off-road, stellar ground clearance. It's got, um, it's got everything you need stock, but if you put a put obviously better aftermarket suspension on bigger tires, chip the engine, free flow exhaust, the sky is the limit. But it's a great platform, very very solid build quality. Mitsubishi Japanese reliability cannot go wrong. Mitsubishi Pajero, number six on the list. Moving on up to the business end. Number five, we've got the Toyota Hilux from the 90s. Fifth generation Toyota Hilux to be precise. The, uh, the petrol, it's a very boxy shape. I really like the design. It was really what put Toyota Hilux on the map as a mass seller. 2.2 liter petrol and a 2.4 petrol. There's also a diesel. I like the 2.2 petrol. It's the same engine that was in the Camry, and that was that was a beautiful, beautiful engine, tough as teak. I've seen one of these been used as a fire truck with a thousand liters on the back. The back, the back of the truck was sitting down like a like a little poodle having a wee, and it made it up grade three, grade four off-road at Bonniedale Farm. So, if it can do that, you know the build quality is there. 1990s Toyota Hilux, you cannot go wrong. You can pick one up for about 89,000 Rand, which is about five, six thousand dollars. They'll be hard to find in, 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 the, in the US, but if you come to Africa, if you go to the UK, they're dime a dozen. Very, very, very strong vehicle. There were a few people asking why the Hilux wasn't on my main top 10 vehicles for overlanding. Very close to the list, but this one definitely comes in top five for your budget 4x4s Toyota Hilux. Also great parts. The engines can, can run on slightly dirty fuel. Parts are cheap. And it just really looks cool, the older Hiluxes. The new Hiluxes, the styling's a little bit frumpy, but those old ones look really, really cool. Moving swiftly on to break up the Toyota party we got the Parenti which was made for the Australian Arms Forces you can pick up one of the cheapest ones for about ten thousand dollars in in America in, in Australia they go all the way up to thirty forty thousand dollars it comes in a six by six so that's going to be more for 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 more your top end clients but if you can find an old one a sort of a 92 model 110 if you can get that, you're going to get the cool looks of the Land Rover Defender 110, but better reliability. That Isuzu 3.9 turbo diesel engine is the shiznit. So that just cha that's a game changer, putting a proper engine like that in. And it's not underpowered. I've been saying forever the regular 110 was underpowered, but with a 3.9 Isuzu, Isuzu being one of the most reliable engine manufacturers in the world, there's also a lot you can do with the vehicle, a lot of aftermarket accessories body on frame, the sky is the limit. That's what gets it to number four. Now we're getting into the cream of the cake, the top three. And where can you start but the Mac Daddy of Land Cruiser. The one that got Land Cruiser on the map that started eating into the Defender. 
and the Land Rover, Range Rover sort of foothold on the overlanding market. Before Toyota broke and it was only Land Rover and Range Rover. That's all people knew until the 60 series Land Cruiser came around in the 1980s. Not as nice to drive as some of the later Land Cruisers in terms of comfort, but in terms of bulletproof reliability and just the cool factor, parts availability and off-road ability, you can't go wrong with a 60 series Land Cruiser. And you can pick one up in the States for about five to 10,000 dollars, still quite affordable. Might pick to be another one of the collector's items, so get one now before they get too expensive. If you can get the diesel, it's the one to go for. The petrols are hellishly heavy on, on fuel. And if you've got a bit of spare money in, in, in the pocket, I'd be tempted to put an automatic conversion on, on the truck because those old clutches are quite heavy. And, and I'd say the worst part of old trucks is all those clutches. So if you've got an extra couple of bucks, I'd change that out. But as you get it, great off-road, bit of a head turner, if you're in a bit of a hippie sort of vibe, can't go wrong, Land Cruiser, 60 series, third on the list. Sure, getting to the top two. I'm going to have to slip my favorite all-time budget overlander in here, and that's the Prado 90, the Land Cruiser Prado. 90 also known as the Colorado For me, it just ticks all the boxes. It looks great. It's comfortable. It's got leather seats it's got a great clearance the bulletproof uh, 1kz engine you can also get it in a in a, um, In a v6 petrol, but that's a bit of a, a bit of a gas guzzler Parts availability is good at the 1kz is the same as that's in the in the Hilux and the, and the forerunner so if you're going through Africa or remote parts of most countries, you're going to be able to get parts. I've driven and it, it just feels like a, it's, it's, got, it's, it's like a symphony driving that. You feel like you're driving a proper truck, but it's in comfortable seats and it really just, I've never seen anybody driving a Prado without a smile on its face, without a smile on their face. You can pick one up, a good one up in South Africa for about 120 thousand rand about a hundred thousand rand which is about six or seven thousand uh, dollars um well worth it bulletproof reliability and there's a lot you can do with it it's, it's a big cavernous space you can take the back row of seats out you can get take it's a seven seat you can take both back seats out and put a double bed in there storage drawers there's a lot of things you can do with the prado 90 and it's still pretty affordable and for me quite eye-catching Oh, never thought we'd get you, but number one on the budget 4x4 list, low range, under 10,000, perfect for overlanding. It can only be the Toyota Land Cruiser 80 series. The car that Toyota probably spent the most money on developing. They really wanted to stamp their mark on, on, on the ever growing luxury serious off roading section. This is the one that, that, that was challenging the Range Rover and also the Defender at the same time because it could do the off-road ability of a Range Rover, of a Defender, but have the comfort. Well, not quite 100%, but 90% of the comfort of a, of a Range Rover. That's what really put Toyota on the map. Some of them came out standard front and rear lockers. It, the, the, the 1HZ engine, the most reliable uh, 4.2 straight six. It also came in the 18Z turbo, which some people say aren't quite as reliable because the turbo put a little bit more stress in the engine, but that that's out for debate. You really cannot go wrong with the Land Cruiser 80 series. The petrols are obviously gas guzzlers, so and they're more prominent in America. So if you can get a diesel one in America, that would be ace, but then you've got the, the, the emissions and whatnot. But if you're in Africa, you have to have that diesel, the, the long distances between, between stops. And diesel is easier to find in remote areas. So it kind of makes sense. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my top 10 best budget overlanding vehicles. Very subjective. I'm sure you got your ideas, so leave your comments below, and we'll catch you next time on Africa Sideways.